the year will end more or less as we planned. We will end the year with a fiscal deficit of 4.6% as planned. Our reserves today have crossed 300 billion US dollars. We expect to add about $25 billion to the reserves by the end of today for the whole year. And the current account deficit, which is originally estimated at under $60 billion and then brought down progressively as we move forward, the current account deficit is now likely to be much smaller perhaps about $35 billion. So what we set out to do after my return to the Finance Ministry in August 2012 and what we set out to do at the beginning of this year has been substantially accomplished. The economy is more stable. No one talks about a downgrade anymore. The fundamentals have strengthened. And if anyone has any doubt, I can invite him to a number of articles. I can quote one. The editorial in the Economic Times on the 28th of March, 2014. <coughs> I'm not doing an advertisement for that paper, but that's the last editorial. I've handed over a sheet of paper and those of you who have it will kindly follow it, and others, you will get a copy. What has happened over the last 10 years is, we must look at the period up to 2007-8 and the period thereafter. If political leaders, analysts, do not recognize that what happened on September 15, 2008 was a watershed. I'm afraid they don't understand what's happening in the world. So one has to look at the performance of the UPA up to 2007-8, and then what kind of challenges the country faced and the government faced, and how we tackled those challenges post-September 2008. I have given in this sheet of paper data for some key years, 1997-98, when the NDA government completed one year and there was a re-election. Then 1998-99. Then 2002-2003, when NDA's first finance minister was, to put it mildly, moved out of North Block. Then 2003-04, when the NDA term came to an end, and the UPA's term began. 2007-08, the watershed year, the year after which the crisis hit the world. Then 2008-9, the last year of UPA 1, when we were in the middle of a full-blown crisis. And then 2013-14, the year that comes to an end today. Those of you who have the sheet in front of you will notice that on every parameter, 2007-8, was the most outstanding year in India's history in terms of economic performance. That was the year when our reserves had crossed $300 billion, $309 billion. And today, I'm happy to report it has crossed $300 billion once again. That was the year when the fiscal deficit was lowest at 2.5. The revenue deficit was lowest at 
external debt to GDP was lowest at 18%. The external debt service ratio that year and the following year were among the lowest, 4.8 and 4.4 respectively. Savings to GDP ratio was the highest, 36.8. Investment to GDP ratio was the highest, 38.1. And GDP growth was the highest at 9.3%. On every parameter, 2007-8 was an outstanding year. And we could have continued that splendid run, but for the crisis that hit the world in September 2008. So post-September 2008, the picture is mixed. And I don't want to go into the details. I've said this in the budget speech. I've explained what happened, the unconventional monetary policy that was adopted by all countries of the world, including India. Everybody has the benefit of hindsight, but when after the event? Hindsight is not something we are blessed with when events are happening. Every country adopted unconventional monetary policy, monetary expansion, <coughs> increased public expenditure. India did the same thing, and that was the right medicine at that time. As a result of which, growth was anchored at a high level, but it exacted a price. I've explained this before, and therefore I don't want to go into a long explanation. The price it exacted was a high fiscal deficit, an unacceptably high current account deficit, because imports were high, and inflation. In the last 18 months, what we have tried to do is to pull back on monetary expansion which several other countries are trying to do. The Americans call it taper. We have pulled back on monetary expansion. We have contained expenditure. We have tried to stabilize growth. And we have succeeded, not in full measure, but in substantial measure. The biggest success we have attained is in containing the fiscal deficit. If you ask me what is the one number which analysts all over the world are looking at, it is a fiscal deficit number. That's the first sign of whether the economy is stable or not. We have contracted the fiscal deficit substantially. We have contained it exactly according to the plan I outlined after I accepted the Vijay Kelko report. In fact, we have done better than the plan. The second significant success is in sharply containing the current account deficit. Remember, last year it was $88 billion, and no one gave us half a chance of being able to contain it or to finance it. This year, the year that ends today, we have not only contracted the current account deficit substantially, we have added to reserves. I think we will add about $25 billion to reserves, and our reserves have crossed $300 billion this afternoon. We've also contained inflation. I'm not saying we have tamed inflation, but we have moderated inflation. WPI inflation has come down. So has CPI inflation, but there is some distance to go. And if there are questions, I will be happy to answer why some of the steps that we took in order to help sections of people who deserved help, like farm labor, like producers of cereals like wheat, paddy, and commercial crops like sugarcane. Why those steps? will necessarily have an inflationary impact, but balancing the inflationary impact 
and the beneficial impact of those steps on the poor, consciously some steps were taken to increase the minimum support price, to increase the wages under Manrega, to give an impetus to rural wages. But we can go into that later if any of you wish to ask questions. So let me tell you, and through you, the people of India, the economy today is far more stable and far stronger than what it was 20 months ago, 